wait a spell for the rest of your breakfast, Mickey. Movie stars come first. Tell Granny more juice for Ain't Opal, and Uncle Jake would like another pot of coffee. Right. Now, don't forget, tomorrow it's my turn to serve him breakfast in bed. Well, all right, Jethro. Hurry now. Goodness knows, Jed, I ain't one to complain. But when able-bodied folks have to have their riddles toted up to bed to them, I think it's downright sinful and lazy. Especially when they bear the proud name of Clampett. Well, I reckon movie picture actors like Cousin Jake is used to living a different kind of life from us, Granny. Besides, the young'uns don't seem to mind fetching a totem for him. Hey, Granny, that opal wants some more juice. Oh, and I'll need this pot of coffee for my uncle, the movie star. <laughs> Jethro, you... My dingies, kid. You'd think we were the poor relations instead of them two upstairs? Now, Granny, I don't hardly think it's fitting for you to be calling a big movie star like Cousin Jake poor relations. I ain't never seen him in a movie picture. Have you? Well, Granny, uh, you and me don't go to a whole heap of pictures, neither. Well, I've seen enough to know who stars and who ain't. That's more than he does. What do you mean? Well, I got to ask him questions last night. He don't even know who Gibson. Go on. Everybody knows who Gibson. He don't. He don't know Dustin Farner, Ken Maynard. He don't even know Jack Hoxie. He was a green in you. Why, them is the hardest riding, the straightest shooting, moving picture stars is. Of course. But do you know who your cousin Jake wants to put in the movie picture? Who? Some fella by the name of Marlon Brando. Hmm. I kind of admire that in cousin Jake. Ain't everybody take a chance on a new fella nobody ever heard of. Good for you, cousin Jake. How long do you think you're going to get away with this movie star masquerade? It won't be a masquerade once I make a picture with Marlon Brando. I'll be a star. You've never made a picture with anybody. What makes you think you can get Brando? With this mansion and cousin Jed's money, I can do anything. Hun, it's Hollywood psychology. When you look like you don't need a job, everybody wants you. In your case, it'll be the police. <laughs> Baby, I am not doing anything illegal. I am merely accepting the hospitality of my cousin, Jed Clampett. You're also spending his money, and you're not even sure that he is your cousin. Neither is he, which makes it all work out very nicely. <laughs> How do you know he's your cousin? Because he says so, and the word of a Clampett is good enough for me. His being a Clampett don't make him your cousin. No, but his saying so does. How come? Because he's a Clampett. And the word of a Clampett is good enough for me. Hey, come quick, everybody. My uncle the movie star is about to come down the stairs, and we can all watch it. What for? Does he come down the stairs different from other folks? For a fact, he does, Granny. I watched him yesterday, and he is something else. Hey, come on, Granny. Let's all go watch. <laughs> Y'all all sit right here and be nice and quiet. And watch that door up yonder. Pretty soon you'll see an honest-to-goodness, real-life movie star coming out of that door and down them stairs. <laughs> well, don't stand in front of my critters. I promised them they could see Uncle Jake. <laughs> time I ever seen him come down that way. <laughs> See, Granny, I told you he was worth watching. <laughs> I bet you he can get shot off a horse something grand. I still say he ain't no hoop kids. <laughs> Now, Jethro, before I speak to Cousin Jake, you sure it is what you want to do for a living? Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. I done decided I won't be a movie star. You give up the notion of being a pig farmer? Oh, yes, sir, Uncle Jed. I give that up to be a brain surgeon. What steered you off of being a brain surgeon? Well, I ain't give that up altogether now. 
If I don't like movie star, and I'll go back to brain surgeon. And... Good thinking, boy. Never put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> Excuse me, Cousin Jake. I hate to bother you. I know you're powerful busy being a movie star, learning your parts and all, but uh, if you could spare me a minute, I'd like to ask you a favor. Quite all right, Cousin Jed. What can I uh, do for you? Well, uh, I know you're figuring on making a picture with this fella, uh, Brando. Marlon Brando, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a fella. Well, now, Jethro here has got a right powerful hankering to be a movie star. And I figured, uh, since you're using an actor nobody ever heard of, uh, couldn't you just as well use Jethro? Use Jethro instead of Marlon Brando? I'll make it up to you any way I can. Of course, I ain't got much to offer except money. But you're welcome to that. How, how much money? Much as you need. Five, ten million? You know, there's a lot of Brando in that boy. It's fan. Fantastic! He is Brando! <laughs> Jethro, let me hear you yell, Hey, Stella! Uh, I don't know nobody named Stella. <laughs> Pretend you do. Howdy, Stella. <laughs> hey, he took that off real good. Just like he knowed her. Cousin Jed, I think that you have come up with a great new discovery. Well, now I can't claim the credit. After all, it was you discovered he was a great actor. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, now, I'll tell you what. Jethro, there's a Marlon Brando movie playing in town. I want you to go see it. Study Brando. Learn all you can. All right? Is it all right, Uncle Jet? Hop to it, boy. Yeah, I want to be a movie star. Well, uh, thank you, Cousin Jake. Uh, thanks a million. Uh, uh, just a minute. I, I thought you said five or ten. <laughs> oh, you mean I... <laughs> Think nothing of it. My pleasure. Where's Jethro going in such an all-fire hurry, bellering like a beast stung calf? He's going into town, Granny. Cousin Jake here done made that boy a movie star. <laughs> well, then. Cousin Jake here can just do that boy's chores. <laughs> Granny, movie stars don't do chores like common ordinary people. They do a lot of special stuff like uh, getting shot off of horses and whooping a whole saloon full of bad men. Ain't that right, Jake? Quite right, quite right. Well, now, uh, uh, if you'll excuse me. Uh. You see, Granny, that's the kind of stuff he does. I still say he ain't no Hoop Gibson. Well, now that you're going to be an important movie producer, you deserve the best. You mean this is for me? With my compliments. <laughs> oh, you hadn't ought to have done that. I ain't no movie producer. Oh, you certainly are. You're financing my picture, and that makes us partners. You own 50... Uh, 20... <laughs> I am cutting you in for 10% of the profit. <laughs> Oh, that sure is nice of you. Jake, I've been looking all up. Whose car? His. <laughs> Your husband just bought it for me. Uh, with what? With the profits from our picture. Yes, ma'am. Uh, he's going to star my nephew, Jethro Bodine. Who? Well, among others, dear, among others. I'm also trying to get uh, Rock Hudson, Doris Day, Cary Grant, Liz Taylor. That, that's a dandy idea. Give a lot of new folks a chance. <laughs> Oh, Granny says Jethro's gonna be a movie star. Well, I wanna be a movie star, too. Well, right here's a fella can do it. it. Was him discovered Jethro. How about it, Uncle Jake? Can I be a movie star like Jethro? Like Jethro? Yes. <laughs> it's entirely possible, my dear. <laughs> with that figure... <laughs> Uh, I figure that, uh, <laughs> with right clothes and makeup, you could be sensational. Opal, take Cousin Jed's daughter into town in Cousin Jed's, uh, new car <laughs> and, uh, get her glamorized. At Cousin Jed's expense? Darling, he's producing the picture. Now run along, girls. Spend all the money you need, ma'am. Turn her into a first-class movie star. Regular Lillian Gish. Bye, Paul. Thank you, Uncle Jake. Glad to do it.
Well, I sure am beholden to you, cousin. My pleasure, cousin. Where's Nutty Bit? She just got the floor half scrubbed and she run out. She won't be back for a spell, Granny. Cousin Jake here done made that girl a movie star, too. Well, then Cousin Jake can just doggone finish the floor. Granny, like I tried to explain to you, movie stars just don't do ordinary labor. Uh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> Oh. Oh. He's getting better every time, Granny. I still say he ain't no hoop Gibson. I don't hardly think you ought to call Cousin Jake and his woman Hollywood Slickers. Well, you tell me. What kind of folks lay in bed till after sunup and stays up till nine or ten at night? I got some more wood to cut. And goes around turning young'uns' heads. Tell them they're gonna be movie stars. <laughs> and then they run off from home and leave their chores. Folks, get ready for the treat of a lifetime. I would like to present Hollywood's newest and most glamorous star, the queen of the silver screen, that dazzling beauty, Miss Venus Adore. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy, Paul. What did you call her? Venus Adore. That will be her screen name. Well, Jed, have you seen and heard enough? Do you want me to take my shotgun to that rascal? Now, I think I hear my wife calling. If you'll excuse me, please. I uh, thought I'd better keep the engine running just in case. Jump in. They'll never catch you. Oh, very funny. Very funny. If I could just figure a way to get around Granny, I'd have it made. Say, do you ever hear of Hoot Gibson? Must be a rock and roll singer. <laughs> oh, no. Hoot Gibson used to be a western star in the old silent days. My mother used to talk about him. <laughs> western, so that's what she's so hept on, with all that talk about Buck Jones and Dustin Farnham. Ah! Clear out of here, you vermin! Oh, did you see that? We have found her! We have found the dance hall queen for the new Hoot Gibson picture. <laughs> Jay, come on! Open. Take her down to Western Costumes immediately and have her outfitted for the role of Straight Shooting Jean, the Dance Hall Queen. <laughs> oh, I can see that big scene now, with her sitting on the piano, singing her song, and Hoot Gibson comes riding into the saloon on his horse, sweeps her up into his arms, and rides off into... Hold on, hold on, you're just wasting time standing there giving me talk like that. I am? Yeah! Let's get going, Opal. If Hoot Gibson needs me, he's got me. <laughs> Don't you like me as a movie star, Paul? Well, yeah, Ellie, of course I do. Uh, you're something to see. I bet you you're going to be a bigger movie star than Pearl White. <laughs> of course, you're going to look a lot better when you get your hair fixed. Oh, it is fixed. Hey, you don't say. Yeah! Jed! I think you better come out here. Some crazy kid is racing up down your driveway on a motorcycle. Look out! Yeah! That there was Jethro. Oh, boy. Jethro, listen, you can't ride those things in the house. <laughs> Granny sees Jethro ride that thing. Where did she see his cousin Jake? 
Even Hoot Gibson don't do trick riding no better than that. <laughs> you back for a couple of days. How was the trip? Fine. How are the clampets? Oh, fine. That, that is to say, fine now. There was a little mix-up the day you left, but... No, what kind of a mix-up? Oh. Seems there are two J.D. Clampets back here. Jake Clampets, an out-of-work actor who is habitually overdrawn. His statement was sent to Jed Clampett by mistake. Oh, no. Oh, Jake, it's all been rectified now. Uh, the, the two are now friends. In fact, Jake and his wife are visiting at the Clampett Mansion. <laughs> Hello? Who's this? Uh, this is J.D. Clampett. Who's this? This is Milburn Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank. Are you the actor? Uh, yes, yes, but I already have the financing for my new picture. My cousin, Jed Clampett, is putting up the whole ten million. <laughs> uh, try me next time. <laughs> all right, Granny, let's try it again. Mr. Drysdale, we are very busy rehearsing for the new picture. <laughs> hello! Listen, you crook! Hello, hello! Something amiss, Chief? <laughs> Chief, Chief, my woman's intuition tells me all is not well. You are fired! I was right. <laughs> as soon as you drive me up to the clampets. Or reprieve. <laughs> you came right perplexed. First Ellie, then Jethro, now Granny, all acting like there was chickens got into the corn man. Bye, but Of course, I could anger myself up and uh, put a stop to the whole thing, but I'd much rather they'd see for themselves. That darn foolish they look. Uncle Jed, look, no hands. I don't know about you, Duke, but it's getting too noisy for me out here. <laughs> Now, I'm going to show you the Stanislavski method of acting. Make your mind a complete blank, and we'll start from there. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, become a tree. Tree? Yes. Think. Think tree. Tree, tree. You're green. And you're leafy. <laughs> you have branches, like this. <laughs> Howdy, Pa. Howdy, Duke. Come on, Duke. I don't hardly know her myself. Oh, Jed, come and listen to the new song I'm going to do in the new Hoop Gibson picture. Let her rip, oh, oh. <laughs> Rode into the dance hall, scooped up his great tootin' jeans. Then he rode out from them swinging doors with his pretty dance hall queen. What's her man? Oh, Jed, don't go, Jed. I've just come in. There's twelve more verses. <laughs> that nut on the motorcycle. Uh, hey, Stella. Uh, what do you say, baby? Uh, you want to drag me in that heat? <laughs> see here, you young hoodlum. Get through. Get off that thing. I got split. I see you, Stella. <laughs> that, that was Jethro? <laughs> I'm afraid it was. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I want to talk to you. Let's go inside. 
thing is worse in there than there is out here. Well, why don't you both get in? You can talk while I drive. That's a dandy idea. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, even if he is your cousin, you can't let this foolishness continue. I'd be right pleasured if my family would just go back to acting like my family again. They probably don't realize how ridiculous they appear to others. I tried hinting at it, but it just don't seem to take a hold. Now, the lure of show business has turned many ahead. Chief, if I solve this problem, may I have my job back? With a raise. Hang on, everyone. Here we go. <laughs> Who and I was alive. All right, all right, let's have it quiet. Hey, Stella! What? It's Scoop. Where's the car? Mr. Drysdale will explain everything. Ready, Chief? Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to Mr. Jake Clampett here, his cousin Jed has decided to get into show business like the rest of you. <laughs> and so, without further ado, Allow me to present the newest sensation of the entertainment world, Jet Clarence! Paul's acting like a darn fool. Sure does look funny. He's making a noise like a stepped on frog. I reckon the men folks in this family just ain't got good sense. I wouldn't talk so much if I was you two. You look pretty darn foolish yourself. Well, so do you. Shh. You know something? I guess we all look darn foolish. Folks, my next number is a special from my cousin Jake here, because it was him who made me what I am right now. <laughs> well, baby, well, baby, well, baby, well, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, well, baby, well, baby, yeah, baby, yeah, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Kind of had you scared there for a minute, didn't I? <laughs> oh! 